Hello and welcome to part 4 of my video series in the Blender Game Engine. In this video I want to show you how to switch screens in your game. In other words, if you want a game menu or a win screen or a lose screen or even more levels in your game, you'll need a way to switch screens, in other words change everything that's on the screen all at once. Let's go ahead and dive in. Of course the first thing we have to do here is change our render engine to the Blender Game Engine to get access to everything that that entails. And I'm going to go ahead and divide this 3D viewport into two by grabbing this little triangle area up here and dragging it straight down and making this bottom window into a logic editor window so we have access to and I'll press N to hide this side properties panel and kind of scroll to zoom that we have access to our sensors our controllers and our actuators now when you're making new scenes in your game you're actually or screens in your game rather you're making new scenes and I haven't talked about this yet in any of my other blender videos but up here in the information bar we have scenes which means you can make different scenes for let's say a movie um, all within the same blender file and you can uh, copy and reference things from one scene to another if you need the same props or same characters um, between different scenes and that's all good and great but what we'll do right now is make this uh, scene right now into our game scene so I'm going to name this uh, scene uh, game just by clicking in this little box and typing and I want to make a new scene now so what we're going to be doing in this video is making a bad guy or something that you don't want to touch and then we'll make this cube into our character and if you run into the thing that you don't want to hit and then we'll go to the you lose screen. So I'm gonna make a new screen now by making a new scene by pressing this little plus button. And when we press this plus button, it brings up a new scene menu and you can click new and that'll make a new blank scene with nothing in it. You can copy the settings from your current scene. So if you've changed things like the gravity in your scene or anything else, it'll copy that. You can link objects or link objects out. I'm not gonna talk about what those are, or you can make a full copy, which is which is great too if you want to copy most things over and then delete things later. I'm just going to make a new scene, so click new, and it makes a whole new blank empty scene. You don't even get a cube or a lamp or a camera. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to name this scene. This is going to be called Screen Lose, and did I call the other one Scene? I called it Scene. I'm going to name the first one Screen, because this is a game. And I'm going to switch back over to the lose screen and I'm gonna add a few things. The first thing we need to add is a camera because when you switch screens where does Blender know to go to? How, what's your what's your view gonna be? Well it's gonna be through your camera and Blender will automatically do that. So I'll press shift A and that'll bring up the add menu and I'll add a new camera and when Blender adds new cameras unfortunately the rotation is sort of at this diagonal I don't want that so I'll press alt R on my keyboard and that will clear the rotation so it's pointing straight down and that's okay because we're going to lay out our screen on this mesh ground I'm going to grab my camera and drag straight up on the z-axis to move it up and so now if I press 0 on my numpad or go to view and camera I can see the ground and if I want to move it up or down I can just make a second window um, in fact I'll do that I'll drag that across and then in this window I'll press 0 or go to view and then perspective or uh, just select camera again that will toggle between uh, your different views and I can move it up or down. What I might do is I might change this camera to be orthographic. That means make it pretty much a two-dimensional or 2D camera with no sense of depth to make like a flat text only or text and graphics screen. To do that with the camera selected I can go to the camera tab in the properties window and I'm going to change it from perspective which means you can have like a different like a wide angle or a fish angle lens or have things look farther away uh, to an orthographic lens and as you can see it kind of changes and it gives me an idea of where it's covering on the ground grid so I can really tell and if I want to make it be bigger I can change the orthographic scale okay so it looks like it's wider as you can see as I'm dragging that value it's making it wider so I can fit more things in the screen or make things a different scale for my screen. So what I'll do here is I'm going to start adding things. I'll add things over here, it doesn't matter, but uh, actually what I'll do is maybe combine these two windows together. So I'll drag this little triangle area into that one and I'll press shift A or go to the add menu. I'm going to add a text object because this is going to be the lose screen. Uh, so text, so shift A or add and text. Now the way you edit text is this is not a mesh actually. It's actually a special text object and to edit the text just like editing a mesh with it selected you press tab on your keyboard and tab toggles between edit mode and object mode 
Um, and you can also do that down here at the uh, header of your 3D viewport. So object mode and edit mode. With a text object, when you go into edit mode, you get this cursor. It's just like a text cursor from Microsoft Word or anything on your computer where you can edit text. You can press delete and it'll delete letters and you can write things. So I'm gonna write, you lose, exclamation mark. Once I'm done typing, I press tab or use this menu to go back to object mode, and then I can position the text as I see fit. If it's too small or too big, of course, you can select it and press S on your keyboard to scale it, but I think that's an okay size for me. Maybe I'll put it right in the middle approximately. And if you wanna add color to a text object, unfortunately, and I'm not sure why the game engine, when you press P to play, um, and right now if I press P it won't work because this is not our home screen. You can only press P uh, Unfortunately when you're on your first scene that you made so it, it'll work if I go to screen game and press P uh, But if I switch over to screen lose and press P for some reason uh, It doesn't want me to get into that scene right away. So P doesn't work Text objects cannot have materials and I'm not sure why they just don't show up You can add a material to it if we go to the material tab in the properties window and press new and then go to uh, diffuse, which is of course the color of objects that light reflects, um, and we make it, let's say, a red color, it's not gonna work. And so the solution here is we can convert this text object to a mesh if we don't care if it doesn't ever change again. In other words, if this text is not dynamic, if it's not like a counter on the screen or lives on the screen, that's gonna be a number that's changing, we can make it a mesh. And to do that, with the text selected, you're gonna press Alt-C. C is for convert. So Alt C, and I want to select Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. Te me basically, it means Mesh from Text. Click that, and if I press Tab now, you'll see I get access to my vertices and edges and faces. Um, but now this material will show up. Um, just a little tip here uh, for text and lots of other objects: shading. You should turn off any specular, make it not shiny, and I would turn up the emit value to one. So I'm going to click under shading under the material tab and turn the emit up to one. That'll make it kind of that solid color. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it. Or I might even click shade list to get the real color. That's probably even better advice. So I can leave emit at zero, but just click on shade list and that'll make it that color of text. Under the font tab, if I were to rewind a little bit, before I converted this to a mesh, there'd be a font tab where I can change the text, I can change the font, in the words, choose Comic Sans or something like that. But let's continue. Um, I have text, I have a scene for my loose screen. Let's go back to our game and let's make a really simple and quick game. So I'm gonna drag my cube straight up. In fact, what I'll do is I'm gonna move my camera. So I'm gonna press this little plus and I'm going to select, and I think it's under view, lock camera to view. Um, now, what this does is it um, lets you orbit through within from within this camera view. If I try to orbit right now, it just breaks out of the camera. It doesn't let me orbit to change the position of the camera, the camera's right there, so it's kind of locked there. But if I lock my camera to my view with, this, uh, with the N key on your keyboard, or the, the properties panel, and then I go into my camera view, I can orbit, so I can change the view that way. I'm gonna make a really, really simple game here. I'm gonna make it so that my character moves uh, forward on the Y axis, and so it's gonna hit a bad guy over here, and the bad guy's not gonna be moving at all. So I've got my uh, setup. What I'll do is I'm gonna add a ground object. So I'll go to the Add menu or press Shift A on my keyboard. I'm gonna add a mesh and a plane. And the plane is way too small, so I'll tap S to scale up and pull my mouse out, and then I'll click when I'm happy. So now I've got a ground. My character, of course, as both meshes are in my scene right now, my character is a physics object since I'm using Blender game. If I go over to the physics tab, you'll see it's a static object, which means it will not fall, it will not be interactive, really it won't fall down to the ground with gravity. Um, so I'm going to change this to the physics type. We've talked about rigid body a few times, we've talked about dynamic. Well, in the last video, if you have not seen that, I would highly recommend it. We talked about how to make a first-person shooter uh, controls and movement for your game where you can control the where your camera looks and where, how your character points with the mouse movement on your screen, just like a first-person shooter. I'm going to change um, my, my physics type of this character object to character. We talked about that in the last video. So if you didn't see that video, I check, I check it out. 
Um, let's go ahead and add some logic. Let's make some controls. So with my character selected with physics type character, I'm going to add a sensor and an actuator and connect them. So the sensor is going to be a keyboard sensor. And I'm going to add an actuator for motion. So I've got those two things. I'm going to select what key I want to use to make my character move forward. So I'll click on this key button and I'll press the up arrow on my keyboard. I want the up arrow to make him go forward or in that direction basically, which will be from my camera's view to the right, but that's okay. In fact, maybe I'll just use right. That makes more sense from my camera view. And simple motion. Well, that's not what I want. If you watch the last video, you'll know that um, if you have a physics type on an object, either dynamic or rigid body, you get more options when you use this simple motion option. If I switch this over to dynamic, you'll see there's a lot more options here. But with character motion, and this is a good thing, you have less. But I'm not going to use simple motion. I'm going to use character motion, uh, which is an option that kind of corresponds with the physics type, although not necessarily. So with character motion, you'll notice that you get jump again. We talked about that in the last video. We made our character jump. But I want this to move the character, or the W, or the right arrow key, rather, to move the character to the right, which is the positive. I'll switch my gizmo to local. Uh, that'll show me that the character actually knows that that direction, the Y positive axis, is the direction that we want to go. So location, Y, and I'm going to use a 0 0.5 uh, positive because that's the direction the arrow points in. And let's go ahead and connect them. This is the local axis, by the way. This needs to be dark, the L there. I'm going to go ahead and connect these two logic bricks. And so now, if I press P, and press the right arrow, my character moves. So how do we trigger moving from the game screen to the lose screen? Well, I need a bad guy, and then we'll do a collision detection. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm gonna add a monkey head. The monkey will be the bad guy in the scene. So Shift A, monkey head. I'm gonna press one and five to go to my front orthographic view, or I can go view, persp ortho, and then view front or any side that you want. In fact, I'm going to go to my side view with the three key on my numpad, and I'm going to grab the monkey head and just put it over to the side, and be I'll rotate it so it's sitting on the ground. Rotate, of course, is the R key on your keyboard. I'll switch back to my global view or my global um, gizmo so I can see the arrows in the global direction so I can move the monkey straight down. And maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger with the S key to scale. And uh, there we go. I've got a big monkey head. Let's give it a material. I'm going to give it a new material. It's going to be red. It's going to be a bad red evil monkey head. Now, this is going to come in and play a little bit later. I'm going to make the material have a name because there's two ways we can make collision detection happen in the Blender game engine. With my character, I can detect if my player using a logic brick that we haven't talked about yet, is going to uh, be hitting a object with a certain material, or if the player actually comes into contact with a certain material. And in this case, if we make a bunch of red monkey heads that are all bad guys, well, we can detect for that material. So I'm going to name this material right here under the material tab on the monkey. I'm going to call this red bad. Or red bad. There we go. And so... With that knowledge, with red, bad, with a capital B, I'm going to go over here to my character, and I'm going to just collapse um, these two bricks without naming them properly. And the sensor to make collision detection work is under add sensor, of course. It is called collision. Go figure. And collision has a couple of ways of working. So I'll click on collision. It'll add that brick. It has a couple of ways of working. It can detect a material like I just spoke about, or it can detect a property, and we'll talk about both of these things. But the way you toggle between these two modes, between detecting a material or a property, which again we'll get to, is this button right here. By default, it's property, but for, for now, I'll work with material, so I'm going to toggle this over to material mode using that button. And now I can specify a material from all the materials in my scene. I'm going to use the red bad material. So what this sensor does, it says, hey, whenever I, the character, touch this material, it's going to do something. So we're going to connect it to an actuator to make this uh, sensor do something. The actuator we're going to use to switch to the loose screen is called scene. We're switching between scenes. So I'll click scene, and I'm going to connect my sensor to my actuator. Oops, that didn't work. Let's try it again. And we have another and there, and that's okay, that's what we want. So there's different things that you can do with this scene actuator. A scene actuator 
can restart a scene as it does by default right here, or you can resume a scene if you've paused maybe, suspend a scene, which I guess means pause, we'll be talking about that in a later video. We can remove a scene, it sounds a bit dangerous. We can add a background scene or overlay scene, we'll talk about that to, for making like overlays for like a, a heads up display or lives or anything like that. We can set a new camera, or we can set a scene, which means change a scene if we have a different scenes in our game. So I'll click on set scene, and right below it, we now have an area to type in or select what scene we want. I'm gonna choose my lose scene. So basically, we just made a logic brick setup for collision. If we hit something with a bad red material, it's gonna take us to the lose screen. Let's go ahead and check that out. I'll press zero on my numpad or go to my view menu and select camera. And let's press P to play the game. And I'll use my right arrow. And as soon as I hit the monkey head, Bam, I switch scenes and I've made it to the lose screen. That's what I wanted. So that's how you use collision with materials, but there's also a way of doing it with properties, which might work a little bit better if you have different colored objects that all should do the same thing. In other words, if I have different monkey heads of different colors that all are bad guys, but again, they all have different colors on them, if I want to do collision detection, there's a way of doing that with what's called properties. Now with the monkey head selected, I'm going to give this monkey head a bad guy property, and that's going to identify it as a bad guy, and I can give the same bad guy property to any other bad guys. And then on my character, my cube, instead of detecting a material for the collision detection, I can click that MP button to make it dark. I can define a property or select a property from the ones that I've already created, and any object with that property will act as a bad guy and it'll go make us go to the lose screen. To do that, I'm gonna select my bad guy and I'll give it the bad guy property. To do that, in the logic editor window, if I press N on my keyboard to bring up this little side panel, we've always hidden it up until now, but it's a good thing we can add game properties here. So I'm gonna click with the monkey head selected, add game property, and I'll make this area a little bit wider so we can actually see everything that's in there. This is where we can add what, if you're a programmer, you would understand as a variable. And there's different kinds of properties or variables. The default kind is a float. Uh, and that just means a number that can have decimal places. We're not gonna use that. Um, the one I'm gonna use is an integer. That seems to work the best for me. So I'll use an integer. And an integer is just basically a number. It's a counting number. So if you have a score in your game, and it is just using whole numbers, or you have lives that uses whole numbers, you'd use an integer value. None of that matters though, except using an integer, we're gonna just gonna give this property a name, and I'm gonna call it bad guy. And it's important that you remember what case or how you write it. I would not write it with any spaces or capitals or starting with a number, I would just use one word or a bunch of characters that are not numbers or symbols. So I'm keeping it simple, bad guy, all lowercase. And so now, in my character, instead of using the material bad red or red bad, I'll select it and I'm gonna use the property uh, bad guy. So again, under the collision brick uh, with the character selected, instead of having the material, I'll click on this MP button. I'm gonna type out, unfortunately there is no list here, I have to type it as I typed it before, bad guy, enter. So now if I play my game, I'll press P and I hit the monkey, it's you lose again. So there's two ways of making a collision happen and switching between screens. You can use either materials or properties depending on which one you want. And it is quite simple. I'll press escape on my keyboard to make different screens and switch between them. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.